Welcome back. Let's have a look at the first case, a high-level tracker. This can be used when you need to follow the progress of an activity which is performed for a few categories, different regions, different countries, different business lines, etc. For example, your project is about implementing a new software for accounting processes. Your company has presence in Germany, France, Singapore and Japan and the new system will be used by all local accounting departments. Your next activity in the plan is to collect the names of all employees who will need to use the software. As the organization includes thousands of people, you have requested the finance and accounting managers of each country to provide the list of names for their local departments. Let's open our Excel. A good first step before typing anything is to mark the whole sheet and change the fill color to white. In this way, you remove the default grid lines and give your file a cleaner look. We will start typing not from the very edge of the sheet being cell A1, but we'll leave one column and one row empty. This gives some space to the table and is a commonly adopted practice. We will also reduce the height and width of the first row and column. We are now ready to start from cell B2. Note, we will be applying these initial steps to all files we create. OK, you can now create the tracker. Create a table manually, going column by column. Your first one should be the category. In our case, country. Note, we will be doing basic formatting. I will select the cell and text colors now and we'll do some final touches once the whole table is ready. Additional tips and tricks with regards to formatting will be reviewed in a separate lesson at the end of this section. All right, back to our title row. I will go for a blue color and paint the letters white for better contrast. Okay, now, inside this column, we will have the four countries listed. The next column can be the name of the responsible person to complete the action, whatever the action is. In our case, here we have the names of the four F&A managers. Then, status. The one thing you will always have in a tracker, arguably the most important column. In the status field, you need to have limited options. Typically, these will be not started, ongoing, and completed. It is equally important to also set color coding here. The most practical way is to set this as a drop-down menu. Let's see how to do that. Select the cells under the status header. Select data from the main tab and then data validation. A pop-up screen appears. Here, in the settings tab, there is a drop-down menu under the Allow menu. Select List. Below, you can see a new field has appeared, Source. You can type the values that you want your list to have, separated by a comma, like that. Note, the list separator symbol may be different depending on your Windows settings. Semicolon is used for certain regions. In case these do not work for you, check your list separator symbol in your control panel under Region. OK, moving on. Click OK. Ready. These cells are now drop-down menus, from which you can only select between the three options, Not Started, Ongoing, and Completed. Next up, we need to color code the three options. So whenever we select Completed, for example, it shows a positive color like blue or green. Select the drop-down menu cells. From the Home tab, select Conditional Formatting. From the Options, select New Rule. A pop-up window appears. Select from the list you see, Format Only Cells That Contain. The format of the window changes, and at its bottom you can now program your rule. Leave the first drop-down as cell value. Change the second one to equal to. This means the new rule will be applied only if the value matches what you write here. In the final box to the right, 
write down your first status option, not started. Now, you can select the color. Below, there is a button format. Click on it. I will select a color to fill the cell, so I will go to the Fill tab. The menu with the colors appears and you can select the one for Not Started. I would go with something neutral here, let's say Grey. Click OK and again OK on the window. Let's see if it works. We select a cell and choose Not Started. Hurrah! We have successfully color-coded this option. We need to continue with the rest in the exact same way. I would choose green for ongoing and blue for completed. Great! Our status column is now ready. Finally, it is often convenient to add a free text column in such documents for comments. Here we leave room for any ad hoc explanations that are important for the work. For example, Frank needs to prepare the list not only for his internal employees, but also for the employees of a vendor company which provides services to his organization. They also need accesses to our system so that they provide the service. You can add these as a comment for better clarity. We are ready with the table contents and we can do some more formatting. The first thing we need is to put borders. The quickest way to do that is to select the whole table and click on All Borders from the Borders drop-down menu. Next, I will use Bold for the title row. You can also increase the text size by one degree to further strengthen the titles visually. Let's see the alignment. The contents of my status column are standardized and limited within the three options. Hence, it will look better if aligned in the center. I will select the whole column and click on the center option under the alignment section on the home tab. Neat. Then I can decrease the text size of the status options by selecting the cells below the title and decrease the font size. All right, this may be a simple table, yet it is quite effective. In your next project meeting, you present it and all team members can see it. You are well in control of the status, and Max, Frank, George and Akira now know very well that their work is important for the project and the progress will be monitored. Let's continue with the next work tracker. See you next lesson.